NASCAR officially came back last Sunday at the Darlington Raceway, but I think NASCAR truly returned last night, a Wednesday night race, one of the first times in 30 years that NASCAR has done a midweek race, and it could not have gone better uh, if you had scripted it uh, for NASCAR and for them going forward. In fact, I'm going to go so far as to say the events of last night may lead to NASCAR coming out of this pandemic in a stronger position than they entered it in, which is absolutely insane to think about. And the person that you have to thank for this, whether you like him or not, is Kyle Busch. Let's take a look at exactly what took place and why NASCAR is not only the hottest topic in the sports world, but one of the hottest topics in the country right now. So 30 laps to go with rain impending. Denny Hamlin leading the race. Chase Elliott passing Kyle Busch for second around the outside. Kyle tries to get back in line, turns Chase Elliott into the inside wall. Unbelievable. And Chase was none too pleased, as you can imagine, many NASCAR fans were as well, giving Kyle the bird uh, as Kyle drove by. What a crazy moment, and this is what Kyle Busch had to say about the incident itself. Oh, there's no question. I know I made a mistake and just misjudged the gap. Um, you know, when we were racing there with the 11 and the 9 had a run on, the, on him, I knew he was there. And uh, I knew I needed to get in line as quick as I could. And in doing so, you know, I watched him and his momentum that was going by me. And then I tried to look up in the mirror and see where Harvick was to get in. And I just misjudged it. You know, I made a mistake and uh, clipped the nine there and spun him into the wall. So I hate it for him and his guys. I mean, I got too many friends over there on that team to do anything like that on purpose. I've raced Chase since he was a kid and never had any issues with him whatsoever. So it was just um, a bad mistake on my part. And, and um, we'll just have to deal with it later on. So I said it at the beginning, I'll say it again. This is the best possible outcome for NASCAR. I cannot stress this enough. This is this is a huge moment, huge. This is something that we're going to, no joke, look back on, you know, five, 10, 20, 30 years from now and say that was one of the most influential moments in the sports history. And let me tell you why. One of the big parts, one of the big key factors in NASCAR's boom in the 90s was the rivalry between Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt. And yes, I'm invoking Dale, I'm invoking Jeff. But what you had was uh, a divisive driver, uh, a successful driver in uh, Dale Earnhardt, a driver that you either loved him or you hated him. And I think Kyle Busch, whether you like it or not, and I know this is a controversial take, he's the closest equivalent to that in the series right now. And then you go over and you look at a Jeff Gordon, a clean cut driver, a driver that all the ladies like, a driver that, you know, kind of the hardcore racing fans maybe don't like quite as much. Someone who uh, appeals to casuals, appeals to children. Well, I think that describes Chase Elliott very well. He's a driver that appeals to casuals. Now, he also has a family connection to NASCAR, which helps him a lot um, in his popularity. Bill Elliott was one of the most popular drivers ever in the history of NASCAR. He won the most popular driver award like every single year. Now, some people say that was because of his fan club being biased. But regardless, you had the biggest heel in the sport. And yes, I'm going to use wrestling terminology. I hate to say that. You had the biggest heel in the sport and the biggest baby face. They clash on the track together. The heel wrecks the, you know, okay. So Kyle wrecks Chase. Chase is the most popular driver. Kyle's the most divisive one. For the end of a race, it ends under rain conditions. So essentially it's a cliffhanger. It was a midweek race with another race, one of the biggest races in the sport, the Coke 600. And mind you, Again, the Coke 600 has even more significance this year than it ever has had in the past. It no longer has the, the, the uh, competition from the Monaco Grand Prix or the Indianapolis 500. Both of those races have either been canceled or moved further back in the year. The Coke 600 is the Memorial Day race, and as an IndyCar fan, all that hurts to say, but it is the Memorial Day classic this year. You could not have scripted, I mean, you could, Vince McMahon in his prime, 90s Vince could not have scripted this better. You have this incredible storyline, this incredible heat. I mean, Chase Elliott fans, I love you guys, but you guys are crazy. You guys are crazy for Chase. And the fact that most Chase Elliott fans, and even if you're not a Chase Elliott fan, you probably don't like Kyle Busch. 
So, and then you've got the Kyle, the Rowdy Nation. I mean, it's not like Kyle Busch doesn't have fans. In fact, I, I definitely like Kyle Busch. I, I enjoy watching him as a race car driver, and I love that he stirs stuff up. It's incredibly entertaining. And this is what this is all about. I mean, NASCAR is different from other motorsports in that there is that wrestling factor to it, uh, a lot more than a lot of other racing series. Though I think you could make an argument that F1 kind of has this too because there's so much drama in that series. But especially for NASCAR, you see a lot of crossover with wrestling fans, and I think that's a, a big key to it. People like to have heroes to cheer and villains to boo. And some people cheer the villains, and some people cheer the or boo the heroes. And so that dynamic, I think, has been missing from NASCAR. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, who were the drivers, say, that came after Earnhardt and Gordon? Who were the drivers that the fans adored and who were the drivers that they hated? I mean, I guess you could maybe say that Junior Nation versus Jeff Gordon, but I don't think Jeff Gordon was ever a really good villain um, from, from that perspective to anyone who wasn't a Dale Jr. fan, because I think really the only reason that Junior Nation hated Gordon was because Gordon was the only guy who could beat him straight up at Talladega. Um, but this is a little bit different because you have Kyle Busch who, you know, again, he's hated for a lot of different reasons. He is, he's coarse. He doesn't put up with BS. He wins a lot. He goes into other series that, you know, NASCAR fans consider to be lower, like the Xfinity and truck series. And he goes and wins those races. He goes and beats up on the little kids. Uh, he takes candy from the baby, I guess, if you could say. Uh, and, and, but here's the thing. He wins. He is a successful race car driver. He is a champion of the sport. Then you got Chase Elliott. He's a merchandising machine. The girls love him. The kids love him. He is kind of the perfect baby face. And he's, you know, and Chase, I don't want to say he's like a, he's not got a super interesting personality, but he's got enough of a personality that he makes a good hero. I think a lot of people can maybe project themselves onto Chase Elliott, believe it or not. He's a good everyman. So I think this, this dynamic is going to be very interesting going forward. And I think as well, you've seen some of the, the, the battles in the past that Chase Elliott's been involved in, he's not necessarily afraid to get involved to put a bumper to somebody. And this is going to be something that makes people tune into races going forward, especially those casual sports fans. If there were any casual sports fans, remember the TV rating uh, was way up uh, for the first Darlington race, particularly in 18 to th into the 18 to 35 bracket. This is like your UFC, your NBA, uh, you know, that kind of demographic. The, the sports that young people consume aren't necessarily racing. Believe me, I know that. I can look at my demographics. But when they do consume it, this is the kind of stuff they're looking for because, you know, again, this is a generation that's grown up on internet drama, on Twitter, on Leafy and Keemstar, all this stuff. They look at that stuff and, and it interests them. So when they see it in sports, uh, it makes them, I mean, even from a motorsports perspective, look at what happened when Lando Norris and, and Simon Pagano crashed in that iRacing race. There was incredible heat there. This is what the young people are interested in, you know, for better or for worse. And I think that is going to be a huge key for NASCAR going forward because I think a lot of people are going to be tuning into these races going forward to see what happens and what develops in the Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott rivalry. Even though, of course, as you saw, Kyle Busch apologized for the accident and pretty clearly seems to have no real ill will towards Chase Elliott, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a fan rivalry. And I think in a lot of ways, the fan rivalries are more interesting uh, for NASCAR uh, then the driver rivalries themselves, and that's kind of going to be a fun factor going forward. I'd like to talk about a couple of other things about this race because I think NASCAR is really beginning to develop some things uh, that I think could really improve their product going forward. So just a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Uh, inverting the field. Now, do I think they should do this at every race? No, but I thought that for this race, it really helped. I thought seeing some of those faster guys, the guys who had established themselves um, as being contenders, at the previous Darlington race, starting mid-pack, I think it made it a lot more interesting at the beginning of the race. It was, I think that's one of the big problems NASCAR has had is is the beginning of their races aren't very exciting. And I think if you don't have an exciting start to a race, it doesn't hook viewers and probably part of the reason why the TV ratings have been going down. Now, that being said, I think they need to rein in the competition cautions, honestly. I mean, I, I, you know, I, you guys know that I hate the stages, but the fact that they had so many yellows at the beginning of this race because cars were spinning out and stuff and they still threw a competition caution, that needs to stop because I think 
it really breaks up the flow of the race and you know you don't really need it with the stages now especially in a shorter race like this why do you need a competition caution lap 25 if you're going to end the stage at lap 60 i don't get it um doesn't make any sense to me uh that was one thing that i do really want to touch on is shorter races I've been banging this drum for a long time. I think NASCAR does need to go to shorter races. Now, do I think they need to go to shorter races across the board? Absolutely not. I think the Daytona 500 should be 500 miles. I think the Coke 600 should be 600 miles. But do you really need to be going to New Hampshire and running 300 miles? What if you made that a 200-mile race? I don't know. There's a lot of things that you can look at uh, to make these races shorter, make them more consumable, uh, make them more interesting. And here's the other thing to think about with the shorter races in particular is that I think variety is really what's going to make NASCAR's product interesting. I think if you if you stop so much of the sameness, uh, you hear cookie cutter track all the time. Well, if you go to a cookie cutter track and every race isn't the same length, uh, if you go and run a 200 mile race at Chicagoland and you run a 400 mile race at Kentucky and you run a you know a 250 mile race at, at Atlanta or something, then you start adding different factors in there it's different every week there's a reason to tune in every week even if the tracks look the same the race will take a longer period of time uh and it may play out differently i think the shorter races are absolutely where nascar should be going at least for uh some of their less prestigious races midweek races i think this was an interesting concept um i don't think it's a game changer again we'll have to see the tv ratings um because it's going to be tough to maintain once real sport you know once the entire sports world comes back um i think it would be a good experiment to do once or twice a year um you'd have to make it sure that the the tracks were uh attractive enough that they could sustain a wednesday night race but i think maybe you could either do you could do it at Bristol um, because if you look at the crowd there, the crowd's not very good for the spring race. I mean, you could do the spring Bristol race at night on a Wednesday night, and I think that may be great TV. Um, so I think you could. I think there's a place you could work mid midweek races in. You could even do the double headers that way. You could do a Wednesday night race and then do a Sunday uh, afternoon race. That could be another way you could do it. I I don't know. I I I don't think it's a game changer, but I think it's something that NASCAR should look at going forward. And finally, the restarts. Um, the double file restarts I don't think work on the on the tracks with with kind of one groove. You saw a couple of times where drivers were able to get. Um, some excitement or some good restarts uh, from the inside lane. For more or less, uh, they, they immediately try to get back in the outer lane, and oftentimes the driver starting on the inside lost two or three positions just simply because they're on the bottom lane. I don't think that's particularly fair. Um, I know single fire restarts aren't that popular. Um, I saw uh, Ty Dillon or uh, Austin Dillon suggest a, a commitment cone on um, on uh, or a choice cone on social media. So maybe that's something they could do. Um, but I think the restarts may have to change at some of these tracks because I think in a lot of ways that bottom lane just is just such a disadvantage that that it kind of hurts the product. I don't know. I thought this was incredibly positive for NASCAR. I, th- I was thoroughly entertained. I would like to see them adopt this formula going forward because I think you saw what happened, even though the race ended under rain. And maybe that means they should cut the races by a little bit even more. May- you know, I thought this race maybe even was a little too long as it was. If they could get it around two hours, for, uh, 15 minutes, two hours, 30 minutes per race, I think that would be a great uh, length for TV. That means you could have a 15 minute pre-race show and a 15 minute post-race show. That's a three hour TV window. I think that would be fan freaking tastic. Also shout out to Fox sports for actually doing a proper starting grid. I really appreciate that, but that's my thoughts on it. I thought it was a huge W for NASCAR. Totally admit that. I think it was absolutely uh, the best thing that could have happened for them. And it happened and we will see what happens on Memorial day weekend for the Coke 600. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube, and I will see you in the next video.